What up players, Wobas Tay back for the third and final installment of how to paint this sexy sexy vampire Isabella von Karstein in fine cast. If you've seen my other two videos, then you'll know that we are now working on the fine details, the last things that we have to do to paint her up. Everything else is pretty much done. We could put her on the board like this, she looked totally fine, but the War Boss Taste standard demands perfection. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to paint the flowers. We're gonna highlight the green blossoms of the flowers. And what we're gonna do for that is we're gonna just take simple old bleached bone bleach bone and paint them paint up the the very tips of the the leaves on the side of the blooms uh, we are okay How have you all been? It's been a crazy busy week. I'm uh... My job just kind of landed me some great new opportunity to take on more work. And I love my job, so it, it helps. You know, if you, if you love your job, I love my job, I love my hobby. And I'm very happy that the job I love can pay for the hobby I love. There's just not enough time in the day. Not enough time. But anyway, yeah, like I'm like I was saying, I got this opportunity to to make a little bit more by putting a little bit of extra time in. And I'm totally willing to do that. I actually like I said, I, I, I do the job that I do is a job that I love. And so that's that's really awesome for me. In fact, after taking on some extra hours these past couple of weeks, I was able to pad my bank account enough to have enough extra disposable income to not only buy some of the new Vampire Counts kits, I'm also hitting Remember, there's some some buds up here, but also to buy myself another zombie dragon kit, which I'm super stoked about. I'm really happy for that. Okay, so expect a zombie dragon tutorial soon. Woo! Next thing we're gonna do is we are going to paint our chalice with the blood inside we're going to give a highlight of dwarf flesh, watered down dwarf flesh, which is going to, which is going to um, bring out the color and make it seem very lively and vibrant. And we're only gonna do that where the, the, the lighting is the highest. Now, some people would highlight the red in this step with maybe like an orange. Uh, progressively go up from dark red to blood red to like blazing orange or something. To which I say, humbug. Because we want it to look like human blood, and human blood is vibrant, pale, red, lustrous color of fresh blood. It only darkens and turns brown when it's been left out for a while or dark black or when it's spread over something, but I think that that is a cool, that's a pretty cool effect right there, I think. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we are going to, is that it? I just have to double check that that's all the blood. We're going to paint the undersides of our blood to create a nice contrast with, oh, what do you know, scab red. Ah! things left and right. So what I mean by the underside is look for when you're approaching the model from underneath like in focus right there. I'm going to be painting the underside that might have gotten 
that might have gotten some paint, some blood red paint on it from the earlier steps when we were painting the blood in the chalice. Now at this point, some of you who like painting lots of blood and gore on your models, you might paint lots of this red gore on your on your chalice, on the entire chalice, like like Izzy was just like toasting homies and pouring pouring out her 40 on the sidewalk everywhere she went in the battlefield and that's fine you can do that just remember if you do that though that it's you you want to create the the distinction of the the red from the from the gold so so you can do that but you just got to be careful that you don't go overboard okay so now that that's done the last thing we're going to do for the gold, for the the blood in the chalice is we are going to I need an assistant. Igor! Where's my glass varnish? Right here, master. Thank you, Igor. We're going to glass varnish our blood. Now, glass varnish, I love glass varnish. It makes things have a very realistic, wet look to them. So I'm, I use it for, for liquid. I use it for gems, so it has a shine. This is fantastic. Okay, so there. You see how my blood now has a very, ooh, disgusting, almost uh, fruit roll-up look to it, which is kind of what I want, and I'm really happy with it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, speaking of gemstones, is we're gonna move on to our gemstones. And for our gemstones, we are going to, because the majority of the model is is painted in dark blacks and reds, I'm going to make the gemstones the contrasting blue color by painting them up in hawk turquoise. At least that's the plan, but hold on, let me look. I wonder if I should paint them instead in in purple, like the Von Karstein purple. Hmm. Hmm. This is like me just thinking up on the spot here, but you know what? No. No, I will not. Hot turquoise. I'm gonna throw caution to the wind and give, give our lady some blue gemstones. So the gemstones on this model are at her neck right there that, uh, on her choker. So what I do is I paint from the top center to the bottom center and then across to the left side. So on the right side, down the center, and then to the left. Now you've got a bunch of different gemstones to do this on. The only one that really needs to follow that guideline though is the one at her choker because that's the only one you see straight on. So I'm just kind of fudging these other ones on her chalice, whether or not they're totally specifically to the way that I want them is not as important. Because the one on her neck is the one your viewer is going to be looking at. There's also this one on her dagger handle. So I want to make sure that I get that one too. Her dagger handle is right there. Next to highlight, we're going to take our ice blue. Uh, there we go. And we're going to highlight the gems. And I'm only really going to do this special technique on the gem on her choker. And I'm just going to dot the other ones. But I'm going to be looking at the bottom half of, of the gem so that the hawk turquoise still is really prominent in the top and the right. Focus you. Okay. So. It's really hard to see. There you go. And for these other ones, I'm just going to briefly dot 
the bottom parts. As a painter, you try to fool the person who's looking at your model into believing that light is reflecting a certain way through the highlights. And that's kind of like through the way you're painting, I mean, and we do that through painting highlights and and all that stuff. So there. Okay, I'm gonna take a little break and be right back in a second. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do to work on our gems is we are going to varnish, gloss varnish our gems again. And this is to give it that nice reflective shine that gem work has. Now, um, you want to be careful when you're putting on gloss varnish because I've noticed that if you have too much and it goes over different parts of your model, that those models will look shiny as well. And you don't need that because it's just not, just not good. So you want to use brush control, just a little bit of gloss varnish on the tip and that'll do it for you. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to give our pretty lady here some makeup. And the first thing we're going to do, oh, also the deathly, ghostly look to her eyes. So we're going to take some ice blue and we're going to water it down almost to the consistency of a glaze or a wash. So lots and lots of water really really make it thin down and then you're going to paint in her eyes and you're not even going to be painting in her eyes but more around and under So we're giving her, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. We're giving her some eyeshadow. Let's zoom in even more. I'm trying to muscle memory where the camera is, but if you notice that I'm painting in right under where it looks like her eyebrow is, and then around her eye, not going too much under. Now if you'll remember that, I have to hold it upside down. If you'll remember the purple and ogren flesh wash that we did earlier really helped to give definition and shading to, to the model. So what we're doing now is we're just creating kind of a haunting glow slash eyeshadow effect to her eyes. Now, if you feel yourself like you're painting on the tops of her che cheeks, her cheek line, then you've gone too far. But this is kind of the effect that we're going for. You turn off the lamp so that you can kind of see it in a different lighting. There, so it's got this haunting blue glow to it. Okay, shield your eyes, I'm gonna turn on the light again. All right, now the last piece, or the second to last piece for her makeup is the blood red lipstick. Now I'm going to tell you a secret that, well it's not really a secret, but I, I learned this in a white dwarf a while ago and I also got this from a friend who said when you're painting lipstick don't paint the upper lip, just paint the bottom lip and that will indicate where the lips are. If you paint the upper lip then it's going to make it's going to make her look like a drag queen and that is not what we want. We want a sexy vampire lady. Not a scary, scary, scary thing like that. So, this is where your um, your cleaning skills 
when you are cleaning the model because of the fine cast over here is going to come in handy. Like I said, we're putting blood red on the tip of our brush and we're just lightly, gently applying it to the bottom lip. What I'm doing is I'm getting it all over the chin because I also want to show you an option that you could do is make like she's drinking from the chalice so you can make the blood run down her chin but I'm personally I don't really like that look so I just did that to show it to you and now I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my my denim stone which is the base that we use for her skin color uh. Where's my Deneb Stone? Igor! Yes, Master. Have you seen my Deneb Stone anywhere? I put it in the refrigerator. Why would you do that? Because I'm an idiot. Igor. Igor, where's my Deneb Stone? I'll go fetch it for you, master. Here it is, the next tool. All right. Water it down a little bit. So get this baby in focus and fix this problem right up. Need a little bit more paint. I love Den of Stone because it really gives this pale skin kind of vibe to it. There's like no color at all and it really gives a good pallid skin tone look. Which is perfect for vampires, um, dark elves, creatures that don't get much sun. There you go. And there you have it, folks. Let's zoom out a little bit and get, get our girl in full view so that we can show her off. So there's my painting tutorial for Isabella von Karstein, broken up into three parts. Again, sorry about that. Let's say, oh, that's a beautiful, look at that skirt with the highlights. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to get some inspiration from it. I hope you were able to learn some good techniques or improve or just some different techniques. There are other things that you could do if you want that I, I'm choosing not to. Like um, you, can, you can highlight the gold. If you want to highlight the gold, that's an extra step all you really need to do. Just wash it with some Griffin Sepia or even go dark and go bad at black and, um, and then just highlight it back up. You might even be able to want to highlight it with some, some Mithro Silver. But for me, I think this is, this is a good finished standard that I, I might do after I'm done while I'm uploading this. But just wanted to show you my technique and, and really I just love this figure. This is one of my new favorite sculpts. I have the new Krell model. We'll see if that guy matches up to, matches up to Izzy here, but I'm really happy with her. Hope you are too. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.